Thank you. Um, I'd now like to introduce you to Noura Ghazi Safadi, who is also joining us on this call and uh, is going to say a few words. Thanks, Noura. Thank you, Yasmin. Thank you, Chris. And thanks to all the participants. Um, actually, um, I will not talk about the, the film itself, as Yasmin has already talked about. I, I will talk about myself, Basel, the detention and first disappearance in, in Syria. So let me start with my childhood. As I was five years old, when my, when my father disappeared suddenly after somebody knocked at our door. My father was wanted because of his political, uh, oppositional political uh, activism uh, against the government in Syria. It was at uh, 1986. I left like six years without knowing anything about my father, except like some visits to him in Lebanon. Then my father disappeared again for almost one year and three months to know after this that he was detained and he was transferred to the central prison in Damascus, which called Adra prison. And he was, uh, he was referred to the Supreme uh, Security State court and this is exactly what made me a human rights lawyer as one of these sessions in this court i i just came to kiss my my dad so one of the policemen like pushed me and we had a fight then and i was 12 years old so i decided to be a human rights lawyer to defend all the prisoners of conscience in syria and maybe in the world years passed and i spent I didn't know actually that I will spend 22 years in my life visiting this prison. The revolution came and I was from the people who, who, who participate in this revolution since the beginning of it. I met Basel in a home in Duma, Eastern Ghouta. We were like we were headed at the same place in uh, uh, the place of our friends. I heard his voice. Uh, first, without seeing him, he was speaking English with with some media uh, agency, and he was talking about people who were detained and injured by the shooting at this demonstration. Then I saw him at the first time. For many hours, I thought that that he's not Syrian or Palestinian or from the Arab world. Then I discovered that he is Palestinian Syrian. A few days later, we became. Uh, close friends and we were doing our civil activism together. We were going to the demonstration. We were doing a kind of human rights documentation for all the population in, in Syria at this period. Like less than two months, we felt in love. And after less than one month, we decided to get married. We got engaged and then we, we were preparing for our marriage, although we were both of us were wanted by the Syrian authorities. But despite all of this, we just want, wanted to see ourselves as, as a bride and the groom. Two weeks before our wedding party, Basil disappeared again. So uh, it needs me like a few hours to know that Basil was arrested. Uh, it was so hard to explain uh, how I felt because at, at this time I was just feel that I'm a woman who is preparing for her wedding party, waiting her wedding dress. Um, I forget everything about what is happening and the, the danger that we are in the middle of it. Almost 10 months passed and Basel appeared again. I received a message, a letter from him, a written letter, says that uh, he was in another prison, but he was referred to the military field court and he is not allowed to have visits. Before this, like many months be before this, uh, we launched Free Basel campaign, which we have um, like the leader of this campaign, Dana Trometer here. And I, because of this campaign and because of Basel detention, I could have friends from like across the world maybe. And this is so actually amazing for, for me. And uh, those people who like a lot of them do not do, uh, do not know each other. So those people become close friends and we were day and night so close to each other to raise awareness, not only about Basel case, but 
pacifist was almost a symbol about the detention in Syria, the, the disappearance in Syria, torture, ill treatment, all these all this, uh, issues that related to detention and basically dictatorship in, in Syria. Then I could visit Basel after he stayed for almost 25 days inside Naya Gel, and because of this great campaign that touched everyone in this world, we could uh, we could be succeeded to uh, to transfer Basel again to another prison and allow him to be visited. I started visiting him, and we got married at the beginning in 2013 to be named as the bride and the groom of the Syrian revolution and I'm so happy and honored to have this name. Almost three years passed and I was almost the main person who is reaching out the international organization and all the government who are involved and in charge with it about what happened in detention centers. Um, I visited more than 400 male prisoners during the, uh, the stay of Basel in, in Adra prison. I got all these testimonies from people uh, that transferred from Sednaya jail and from many uh, security facilities. So through the campaign of Basel and through my visits uh, to, to Adra prison, I could uh, raise awareness about military field court, about Sednaya jail and about all this in Syria. I met Basel last time at my birthday in September 30, 2015. Three days later, Basel called me from the prison and told me that they they come they came to take him, but he don't know he doesn't know who's or or to where. Excuse me that I'm I'm always talking about Basel in the prison, not the past. It's not a grammatical uh, fault. Um, I had a bad feeling. Uh, despite of that, the administration of the prison was promising me that Basel will get released so soon. As usual, I just called Dana and told her what happened. I spent almost two years sometimes trying to, to search the, the fate of Basel and sometimes I was just escaping to know the truth because I had this bad feeling. Then I decided and I went to the normal. Uh, ways in Syria, so we, we know we knew people from the military police and military court, and then the Russian embassy in Syria confirmed that Basel was sentenced to death a few days after he was taken from Adra prison. Um, now I cannot like describe what happened to me, but I was okay because almost okay because I had these great people around me. I was under the attention of the international organizations of all the government and the media. And because that I work in this field, it was hard and easy at the same time because I always and still feel that people need me. So a few months later, I had to leave Syria for security reasons. So I left Syria to Lebanon. At, um, at 2018, early 2018. And after the help and support of Dana, I could have a fellowship in uh, a scholarship to have a master's in, in UK. And when I came to Lebanon, I, I saw that these women and families of missing persons and detainees that need a help. So I apologized and I quit the scholarship and I stayed in Lebanon and established No Photo Zone organization that provides legal assistance, legal empowerment and advocacy for all the detainees, their families and the families of enforced disappeared and missing persons. With my great team, we could reach more than 400 families in Lebanon, in Bika and Tripoli. And we could raise awareness about all the issues related to detention and enforced disappearance. We work as well in Syria, we are trying to to give our uh, services to every single person that uh, have this problem, even in the world. Our plans is to have a branch in Turkey and then a branch in Germany. Then actually I was, I became recognized by many international organizations and government as I was, I had a speech last, uh, last month at the UN Security Council talking about uh, these issues in, in Syria. What I aim to 
is to put all these women and families and detainees under the light as I was and my husband uh, under the light all the time. I was, let me say, a star in many movies. <laughs> And actually, I, I wanted to be an actress, but because of my promise to my dad, I studied law. And I'm happy that I studied law. But um, life is so strange that life puts me in a place that I, I participated in many movies. But for this movie, I considered it that one of the most important movies that I was involved in. It's not because only the topic and the... Uh, like professionality of the director and the producer and the film teams it's always it's also because um like i i was with the great people like father paulo is an icon in syria basil is an icon in syria and maki it was so pleasure to to meet her and um also because um uh, that many of the parts from Basil and Father Paulo were were be used in this movie so i i felt that i live in the in some way in the past. I'm, I'm staying with those people. They are not just vanished in some ways. We are all together in this film. I keep watching this film again and again all the time. Sometimes I cry, sometimes I feel so happy that I live up. I feel that I, I, I still live with Basel in some way. Because all of this and because all of the effort that Yasmin did, Yasmin became a very close friend to me and I'm I'm very pleased to, to have to have her as uh, as a friend and she she kept following me from country to country to film me and I know that she she was so tired and she was pregnant when I met her first and now uh, Zuzu is more than three years old so it's like it's really like strange life Finally, I want to conclude with talking about justice. Uh, after almost 10 years of conflict in Syria, sometimes we feel that we are so pessimistic to feel that justice will come so quickly. But what I always raise is to, to look at justice, justice from different uh, point of views. Like justice is not only accountability, with the importance of that accountability and these cases that applies in uh, in Germany and all these uh, sessions of the court in, in Germany according to the universal jurisdiction. But also let, let's help all these families across the world, like Syrian refugees, especially in neighboring countries, to get just small pieces of this justice, like recognition of the crimes against them and against their beloved ones, and also by reparation. I always invite everyone for forgiveness actually and sometimes i be like um like i had this look that what i'm talking about but forgiveness will help the senior society to recover from all this recover uh, forgiveness do not uh, prevent any kind of recognition or accountability but we have this like big sickness now among the senior society in Nofoto Zone, we are provide our services from all the people from different political backgrounds, and we were successful to gather people from loyalists and opposition. At the end, I am st still looking for Basel remains and burial location, and I hope everyone helped me with this. And thank you so much. Thank you.